Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Fleury Labelle. I feel honored to be here today, and I was kindly invited by Michiel to give a talk today on my graduation project, Embracing Black. Uh, I graduated last year from Artes University of the Arts from the course Product Design, and today I will talk to you about my uh, graduation project, Embracing Black, the research and process behind it. Um, then I would like to highlight or talk about a little point that I think is important, and that is the um, white Eurocentric lens that we have in the art world and on art academies. And then uh, to finish it off, uh, we will watch Embracing Black, the paint ritual video. So growing up, um, people would often ask me, where are you really from? Um, do you often go back to your own country? And they would also sometimes ask me, what are you? Um, these are some of the questions that I got asked on a regular basis uh, growing up as a Dutch Congolese uh, girl um, in a small Dutch village in the Bible Belt in of Holland. And um, I grew up and I was born in the Netherlands, so I've always considered myself very Dutch. But of course, I also had this Congolese side to me. And um, because of this uh, mixed race identity, people would also make comments on my skin color and um, weird look. I would get a lot of weird looks from strangers. Uh, so this led to me uh, for many years suppressing actually my Congolese side and I didn't really want to be associated with my African ancestry. So um, yeah, starting off my graduation project, project at Artes, I really wanted to research my Congolese uh, culture and history and learn to embrace that part of my identity actually. Um, so it was really a, yeah, a quest to, um, to heal as well the wound that I had inside of me that caused by uh, experiences of racism that I had. Um, so starting off my research project and to do deeper research on Congolese history and culture, I was really searching for the right resources to do so. And um, I wasn't really, I think, going to find it at the Artes Library and maybe also not at the library uh, in Arnhem. So further, and um, I visited the first the Africa Museum in Bergendal, the Netherlands, and later on a recommendation of a guest tutor at uh, the Academy, I also visited the Royal Museum for Central Africa in uh, Belgium, in Tervuren, near Brussels. And uh, at that museum, they also have a really big archive and library, the Kappa Library, with a lot of books on uh, Congolese history uh, and culture, because uh, Belgium colonized uh, the Congo back in the day. Um, but while I was finding the right resources, resources, uh, I didn't know that these would be from a very Eurocentric and colonial perspective as well. And I really wanted to dig deeper and find uh, information about the Congo from uh, actual Congolese people and sources. Um, so on my research trips to the museums and also to the uh, Kappa library, my attention was drawn to a specific uh, subject which is called Nkisi mm -hmm. and uh, I, the best source that I found for this is the book Art and Healing of the Bakongo uh, written by Wyatt McGaffey and it contains uh, these uh, Kikongo which is the natural language of the Congolese people uh, scripts of this practice so I'll explain a bit further what the practice is. Um, Kisi is in a way used to, to heal and sometimes even to attack people. So, so here you see these uh, images, images of little bundles of medicine, medicine. And, these and these will be made by the Congolese and, and also have to be activated with the uh, power of the ancestors yes. to be used to heal. And in this activation ritual, um, and to charge them with the power of the ancestors, uh, Nganga, the uh, spiritual leader of the community, would um, performances, performances and in and these performances, performances they would use um, a paint from made from white soil, white paint, and, and put that, that on their bodies and around their eyes, um, because white soil and white paint um, was symbolized uh, by the Congolese as uh, death. So the Nganga would want to contact the the death, the dead, the deceased, the ancestors. And uh, that's why it was such a significant color. Um, so this practice of Nkisi was um, 
pretty much kind of erased from history and um, because of colonization, the colonizers saw that Nkisi was too powerful and seen as satanic, and also they wanted to turn the Congolese to uh, Christians. Um, so that why, that's why it was quite hard to find a lot of knowledge on this practice, um, because most Congolese now are also, uh, yeah. So, so when, when I, I gathered, gathered that knowledge, um, I started um, actually doing rituals with the paint on my own skin. And I really saw it as a spiritual way of um, connecting with my Congolese ancestors. So I used white paint and chains and created patterns on my skin. And um, I really saw it also as a way to literally accept my, um, my ancestry and my black skin um, and also contacting my Congolese ancestors in a spiritual way. And uh, with this, I would also like to touch on a little topic um, relating to design, because in this process, uh, sometimes uh, it was quite hard for me to figure out how is this design, and also it would be asked uh, of me by the tutors um, how I could see this as design. But I really believe that spirituality and rituals are part of our life and design of life so in a way uh, spirituality could also be used as tools and also serve as a function um yes yeah, so now that i designed the paint ritual uh, the next step was also to design the tools for this paint ritual of embracing my skin and uh, for this i turned to bukongo religion uh, again this was the religion of the congolese people before uh, the congo was colonized and um, I found also a really great book on this, uh, which is also the only one I found, uh, which is called Bukongo. And it's all about uh, the spiritual Bukongo religion and practice written by a Congolese professor. And um, pictured here, you see the Dikenga, which is the Congolese cosmogram as well. And it is a symbol for sort of the cycle of life for the Congolese before Christianity. So it depicts the four phases of the sun and with that also phases of life um, so you have uh, pala which is birth which is represented in black because um, black is in dark black soil uh, plants can grow and it is fertile then you have tukula which is stands for adulthood and life then we have luvemba death which is the setting sun and is uh, the transformation to death uh, again, represented by the white color. Next to that, you have uh, Musoni, which is seen as midnight and as the realm of the ancestors where you go after this life. And the Congolese also believe that uh, we have a physical world and the spiritual world, the spiritual world, which we go to after this life. And these two worlds are divided by the horizontal line in the middle, which is named the Kalunga and seen as the horizon. Um, in the thin line between these two worlds. And the Kapakongo also believe that um, when you live in this physical life, you also have experiences with the physical world while you are alive. And that's why ancestral connection is so strong uh, for the Congolese. And um, so, yeah, I based actually from the Dikenga, I based my um, jewelry collection uh, for the paint ritual, the tools on that. So I'll go run through them one by one. Um, so here we have Kala, like I said, for birth, um, made from black clay. And she's really uh, big. So when you hold her, you hold her like a newborn baby. Then we have Tukula, life. And um, I uh, Im, um, implied elements of uh, plantain, plantain leaves, screen printed, and also plantain uh, poured plastic. Because plantain is often eaten by African diaspora communities and it serves as life. Um, then we have Luvemba death um, with shell elements and shell beads also that I made myself because I really saw um, since the Congolese believe that when you go up to this afterlife, it's, it's beyond the horizon, so under the water. That's why I included a lot of shell elements. Then we have Musoni for the afterlife, uh, pictured in the color yellow. And um, with one end, the shell again, for death representing, and uh, the other end, the Afrocom representing for life. And then we have the Kalunga, the middle line, uh, which has 
mirrors sort of representing the horizon. And at one end, the Afrocom, at one end, the shell again. So this is quickly the explanation of the materials and colors uh, used for the tools of my uh, Embracing Black Paint ritual. So with um, the chains, I also made a collection of uh, Afrocom amulets. They are there on that table, but you can study them later. Um, and I made this collection because the Afrocom is a very strong symbol for black pride and identity and embracing your blackness. Um, so I made a collection of five of these uh, amulets and all of the wood that is used in these amulets uh, are, is, are also trees that grow in the Congo. So at last, I would like to touch on something uh, that I think is very important to talk about. And that is the undeniably uh, white Eurocentric dominant lens that we have and narrative that we have uh, in art academies and in the art world. Uh, in recent years, there's a lot of talk on diversity and inclusivity in the art world. Um, but I think there's still a lot that, that needs to change uh, for us to educate ourselves and do better. During my graduation project, um, this was also very challenging because um, due to the lack of knowledge and education on the topics that I was talking about, sometimes I really get the right uh, to talk to the right people, the right teachers for my process. Um, and I think it's very important to for us to research more different cultures so these narratives um, will also be included in design because they deserve to be heard as well. Um, yes, and then on a final note, I would like with you to share with you the uh, Embracing Black Paint Ritual video. And I would like to quickly credit the lovely models in this video, uh, Jessica, Zikomo, Therese, and Michael. Uh, they're all from African diasporic backgrounds and they felt very connected to my work and uh, were willing to participate in the paint ritual. So um, we will watch that now. Okay. 